Bop, bop, bop. Ah, our next guest into the Daily Connerton Memorial Company interview chair are gurus when it comes to community banking. We will bring in... Stop. You are. You are. I, 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 I read your bios. I already know one of you. So uh, I, want, I want everybody to know both of you, actually. From Dime Bank, uh, we welcome Nick Kaplinson in also... Legend, I don't even, you're just you, your reputation precedes you uh, from Rockville Bank. I mean, all the branches you opened up there. Bill McGurk. Good morning, guys. Good, Good morning, morning, Gary. A legend in my own mind. People no. have said. Oh, so. <laughs> you know, that's not true because when when John Fuller was telling me <clears throat> about Bill McGurk, I go, Bill McGurk, Rockville Savings. I mean, you, everybody saw your face on commercials. Yeah. I told you about our previous uh, yes, relationships yeah, yeah, right. in the past of Thank uh, you doing your your Christmas events. So, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, let, me, let me just start off with you, Bill. How did you tell me about your role in growing Rockville Bank? It was fun. <laughs> we just had was. the customers first, and it really worked for us. Started off with about uh, fifty uh, million in assets, and wound up one point five billion when I left. And it was just a lot of fun. Twenty two and a half branches when we uh, when I left. A half branch was in the high school in South Windsor. You couldn't go unless you were a student or a faculty or a bank employee. How did how did that come about? And it was get they the asked for it or we uh, we asked them and they get the student uh, to be t- trained as bank employees as tellers and we hired a few from the program. Wow, yeah. what was the impetus of starting a, a community bank back when you when you did? Well, the the Rockville Bank started eighteen fifty eight. Well, I, I you didn't I, I you didn't remember start Rockville Bank, a, but but. You it was a cold and rainy day. I remember. <laughs> I remember it well. No, what was what got you inspired to go into banking? I got started off. I was a bank teller, summers employment in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, City Savings Bank. That's where I got started, and uh, I came back after my stint in the Navy, and I uh, ran into the bank president. He said, "Hey, you know, uh, wonder if we could uh, get a spot for you here in the bank." I said, "Well, I'm." Uh, Except at a graduate school. He said, well, um, GE sponsors the UMass MBA program. Maybe we could sponsor you for that. So they did. I went to work at the bank and took the MBA program and wound up three years later with an MBA degree uh, at nights. Wow. Yeah, so it was, You've oh. always been in the banking then. Starting off as a teller, I mean that's I mean that's like the old story where I started in the mail room and then worked my way <laughs> up, you, to, you know, CEO of of the corporation. Here I started off as a soda jerk in Magnus <laughs> Magnus Drugstore delivering prescriptions and uh, you too, huh? Adolescence, yeah, <laughs> hey. yeah, that was it. So, um, and maybe I can get Nick to kind of weigh in on this. What are yeah? Uh, what are some of the advantages of community banking? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, it's a very different type of delivering service to customers in that. It's it's a personal business. Yeah. It's uh, face to face. It's knowing who your banker is, who your customer is. Uh, it's not operating with rigid formulas. It's looking at an individual's circumstances and trying to to tailor uh, the experience to what they need. And that is a huge difference in this environment right now, Gary. It's uh, you know banking has kind of become more commoditized that's true right yes. i mean everybody's going online everybody's using electronic delivery uh the face-to-face interaction the understanding the customers need can can really only happen uh if you take time and if you're willing to uh to to have that personal connection that's what we are bill was talking about rockville same situation that's that was a classic community bank here in the hartford area uh, my in-laws, my mother-in-law still talks about it. She's a longtime Rockville Bank customer, uh, not happy with the bank she's with as a result of the, of the sale of Rockville at one yeah. point. But Dime is now moving into Hartford, and she's yeah. going to become a Dime customer. Well, good. So, well, you know what? Right. I, I wanted to talk about that because, see, you know all the inside baseball when it comes to banking. But the average person, they really can't differentiate between one of the big powerful, you know, powerhouse bank, uh, you know, banks and community banking. I mean, you mentioned the more personal or uh, personable approach that you take, but it's it's a lot more than just knowing your name when you walk through the doors. Right? Yeah, it absolutely is. And, you know, a, lo- a lot of people are, uh, are, are, are looking at what's our investment in the community. We, we give back to our communities um, substantially. We have a foundation that uh, grants money to local nonprofits, that reaches out to organizations in need. 
Uh, every single community we're in, we invest in, we give money away. Um, it's it's part of the process. Our employees are very engaged. Uh, yeah. It's a very holistic approach as to just a profit-driven approach. It's a more of a sustainable model and a, and a, and a long-term uh, win for, for, for communities, for employees, for customers. It's, Everybody well, likes a win-win yeah, situ- you know, situation. Tell us about Dime Bank, though, and its history you know, as a community bank. You know, like Rockville, we started way back in the 1800s. Uh, some local prominent business leaders saw the need for uh, starting an institution uh, to allow uh, members of the community to deposit money and then in turn loan out to local businesses. Uh, It was very much people helping people locally to succeed. In fact, one point during Dime's early days, we actually lent money to another financial institution to keep them afloat. They were having financial problems. You don't hear that no, I was gonna these say, days. You don't hear that every day, right? Yeah. You know. But but I can tell you that's that's part of the community banking fiber. It's kind of who who community bankers are. It's uh, you, you are your competitors, but your friends. So and, we, and and Bill and I are friends from the old. Oh days. yeah, way back, way back. Yeah. <laughs> we we did that once too. We were urged to help out a an organization in Hartford that wasn't doing so well financially, and uh, we did, and we got our money back after they failed too. We were lucky. Is that common? No. Very unusual. So when you when you were first approached about this, I mean, were you scratching your head, going, "Why am I? What have I just been asked to do?" Depends on who asks you. Ah, <laughs> yeah. somebody in authority, you, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> are community banks um, are they kind of going on the wayside, or because you're growing, but you don't hear about too too many uh, community banks? Uh, you, you get to hear if you really get to talking to people out in the community. It's important. You've got to know the customer. Uh, you've got to think think they're just great. We used to have a thing for the tellers. It was on the back of their teller sign. Gusto. I own the copyright personally. Greet the customer. Use their name. Thank them. Offer another service. Well, that I think, well, and that that's great credo to, to 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 live by and to work by. But you hear yeah. about banks being bought up or merged, right? And, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty common uh, theme in the industry, especially over the last couple decades. Uh, Dime Bank's a little different. We're we're not a, a, a sh- owned by shareholders. We're a mutual uh, community bank, which means that we're owned by our depositors and ultimately our communities. So Ooh. we answer to the customer. Our, the, the customer, the employee, um, and the community are really what drives us. That's our that's our culture. It's not as bottom line driven as a shareholder or a stockholder bank, but. Um, uh, there are fewer and fewer of them in the state of Connecticut. But if you look around uh, in every corner of the state, there is a solid mutual still standing. It's just knowing who they are, what they offer, and the fact that they can compete against the large banks, Gary. It's not that we're so small and we're stuck in a niche. We have electronic banking. We have uh, ways of remotely banking with people and reaching out to communities that may not be in our local footprint. So uh, it's, it's a, you're absolutely right. It's, it's not as popular as it used to be, but it still exists. It's alive and well in Connecticut, and the mutuals that are still around are very well capitalized, very successful. Yeah, but it sounds like that's the way to go. As a matter of fact, while some banks, I just, was I just reading last week, is it Webster, I think, they're shutting down some branches, your gr- dime bank is growing. Are you, aren't you opening up a couple of uh, uh, branches? We are. We are. In fact, this week we opened in uh, Manchester and in Glastonbury, and uh, we are marching up the Route 2 corridor. We opened in Colchester about five years ago. We're continuing to expand, and we're actually zigging while other banks are zagging. Yeah. That's why I like to describe it. Uh, they're closing branches, consolidating. We're expanding and growing. So it is... Um, a, a very refreshing and a, and a story that people like to hear, yeah. and I'm happy to tell it. Community banks are the way to go for families, individuals, small businesses. They can take care of what you need, when you need it, how you need it. Now, what do you need a big bank for? Hey, suppose you want to buy an airplane. That's a very specialized type of financing. I had to do it one time. Heavy equipment. You want to buy a bulldozer? Don't go to a community bank. Everything else, come on down. We'd love to see you. You know, you talk about community banking, but 
Why is it so important for banking customers, though, to have options other than just the large banks when it comes to where they do their banking? You want to be able to get to a decision maker. Okay, so can I get answers faster at a community bank than I would at one of the larger banks? Absolutely. I mean, is there less red tape and bureaucracy? And You know, I, I can tell you I get calls on a routine basis from, from customers. Uh, our management team is very accessible. I will uh, share this story with you because I think this is really an illustration of who yeah. we are and what we do. But obviously everybody knows about the uh, Small Business Administration Paycheck Protection Program that was rolled out in the spring. We were right on board with that from day one when it came out. And our lenders worked feverishly to reach out to local businesses to assist them in in getting that financing. Uh, I have subsequently received phone calls from numerous customers. One actually describing an, an experience he had with one of our commercial lenders at 630 on a Sunday morning. (laughs) <laughs> when he had questions and that lender helped him get a loan. This is a customer that wasn't a dime bank customer. He was with, I'm not going to mention the name, a much larger uh, <laughs> regional institution who honestly did not have him on the priority listing of customers to get loans. We jumped on it. That's who we are. You talk about access to decision-making and being nimble. That, that's what it's all about. And uh, we have a team of people that is uh, really living community banking. It's not a nine-to-five job. It's not uh, you know, uh, as rigid as some of the, the larger institutions. Well, you know what it is. You're not taking people for granted. In fact, you're going the extra mile for your customers. That's absolutely correct. And I, I think, you know, especially in times like we're in right now, people really appreciate that. There will not be... Uh, an experience that somebody forgets quickly. Yeah, um, it, it it makes a difference. It really does. And I'm sure Bill has a million of those stories from his <laughs> career. <laughs> I'll spare you, but I will say that when I was active, my phone number was in the phone book. Oh, I, of course it wouldn't be. Even now, you're still a celebrity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, Nick, I mean, tell me about your decision to move up into the uh, greater Hartford area and, and, and why you chose Glastonbury and Manchester as these new branches. It, it's a great question, and, and the, the answer is, is uh, multifaceted. One, one, it was a natural extension for us up, up Route 2 from Norwich, where we're based, but also in the current environment. We talk about uh, banks consolidating and selling and, and being acquired, branches closing down. Right, right. There were some very attractive locations that became available to us in both of those towns. We looked at several locations. We landed on, on two, one on Hebron Avenue in, uh, in Glastonbury that coincidentally used to be Mr. McGurk's <laughs> branch back in the day. Uh, years, right. Things change. <laughs> years and years ago, it was a Rockville Bank branch. And, and we also uh, have one on West Middle Turnpike in Manchester. Uh, they became available as a result of the consolidation in the industry. And again, during a pandemic, sometimes people scratch their heads saying, you're, you're opening a branch? Yeah. People aren't going into banks anymore. Well, you know what? The pandemic will pass. Of course. Face-to-face banking will come back. Um, and we were just presented with some incredible opportunities to enter the greater Hartford market because there are no other significant community bank uh, presence. Uh, there is not a community bank It's presence. so funny you say that because I get teased all the time, whether it's from my listeners or even Ryan, uh, my producer, because I'm one of these people. I still have a checkbook. I, I'm one of the few people here at this radio station that does not have direct deposit. I get the, I want to hold it, you know. Um, no, I really, in fact, okay. my, Trust but verify, right? <laughs> I was clearing out my wallet. This must have been, I don't know, a year or so ago. And I found an old ATM card. It was the last ATM card that I had. And it expired, I think, in 2013 or 2014. <laughs> Why I was still carrying this. I don't even use ATM cards. Yeah. I, and I know that's pretty extreme, but that's the truth. I am old school when it comes to that, and I believe you wholeheartedly when you said 
People are going to come right back to banks. They love the interaction. You can be a lot more clear about your instructions and what you're seeking to do in your visit to the bank. So, um, but so tell me, I mean, how has the feedback been so far with these two new locations? Oh, it's been it's been phenomenal. Um, and you know, we we do a lot of uh, outreach to new communities, and and we're obviously involved a lot on social media. Bob was just telling me, Bob, our marketing director, uh, was just telling me we have so many new Facebook friends uh, that have signed up since we've announced the opening in the Greater Hartford market. People want to follow us, and um, the response has been. Fantastic. The local chambers uh, both have said to us, wow, community banking is back. That's fantastic. We we know our our uh, communities want co- a community bank. We know you're going to do exceptionally well here. The staff we hired are all local people. Yeah. These aren't folks that we're bringing in from on the other side of the state. These are Manchester, Glastonbury, Greater Hartford residents and bankers that have known this market for decades how, how so, many branches did you say you had uh we have uh, now a total of 13 branches nice so uh still considered you know a, a relatively small community bank but mm-hmm. you know we were talking and bill mentioned how rockville started we started with a thousand bucks back in 1869 and we're a billion dollars today so look at that there you go it's a it's a model that works <laughs> it really is just a thought about the branches Maybe you don't want to go into the bank. You want to do it some way, but you want to be able to go into the bank if you got something to settle. Problem with a check, problem with a loan right. payment or something. You don't want to do with a call center and how many miles away. What advice, though, would you offer to Nick and, and Dime? Get your name out there. Get your people involved in the community and get, get and train the best people you get. That's the big answer right there. I'll share you some McGurkisms afterwards. The way you treat the customers. And, and Nick, I'll, I'll give the final question for you. Uh, what message would you like to share with our listeners uh, regarding Dime? Boy, I, I have to say, uh, you know, if you're looking for a, a more personal alternative, uh, if you're looking for a bank that is going to spend time with you, that actually isn't driven by the bottom line, but mm-hmm. is driven by giving service, and doing it the old-fashioned way, uh, an institution that gives back, we're, we're the institution for you. And uh, Really quickly, I know you said yeah. you 13 locations. Uh, they, what, they can find those locations on your website. Yes. Right? What w- is that? www.dime-bank.com. Feel free to log on at any point. You can open an account online. You can send us a message. Uh, you can learn more about the institution. Our foundation, our Blue Crew, which is our community outreach uh, team, uh, there's a lot of information there. Thank you so much. Nick Kaplinson, Dime Bank, and all Bill McGurk, <laughs> my good, the one and only. All right, we're coming right back to your phone call.